me. He will lead you beside still waters. There's rough water. But he will lead you. So, marriage is not just, I like her. She's beautiful. I like him. He's so nice. And my friends like the way we look together. We look fine in a selfie. That's not why you marry somebody. You'll be amazed at the things we hear. That's not why you marry somebody. Have you asked the God who created you, who you should marry? Let me share a bit of my story. Awake, arise, in time bright, women of fire. You have been called to advance and to establish the frontiers of the kingdom of our God and of his Christ now. And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this? The End Time Bride is a center of incubation where weak ladies encounter the spirit of burning and are forged into women of power and grace who are ready to set their world on fire for Jesus. Arise and shine, O oh End Time Bride. Your time is now. Um, one of the things I've learned about marriage and this life eh, is that the only things that are hard are the things you don't know. If you don't know how to drive, driving will be hard. But people that already know how to drive know that if you enter a car, sometimes you're not even using your mind. You're on autopilot. As far as you know where you're going, you just be pressing as accelerator, you know when to press brake. It's, you're not even thinking, especially if you're driving automatic. You're not thinking about it. It's the same way if you know how to cook. Cooking is easy. It's people that don't know how to cook that will tell you things like, I know how to cook, but I don't like to cook. It's a lie. Best ways that we cook, if you enter the kitchen, two minutes, pa, 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 you just put crayfish, put, put dry fish, put everything that's come out, soup, don't sweet. So immediately you learn something, it becomes easy. The reason why people are afraid of marriage is because they don't know how to do marriage. People don't understand the principles. There are secrets to marriage, there are principles to marriage. Once you understand something, you will know how to do it. So I want to give you a few secrets. I'm not going to share too many things. I don't want to burden you too much. But I've learned that once you understand something, it becomes... In fact, marriage is about right choices. Marriage is about making the right choices. Marriage is also about the quality of the people in the marriage. I don't care how anointed you are. I don't care how intelligent you are. I don't care how good you are. If you join yourself to someone who doesn't have the same qualities as you, your marriage will not turn out well. I learned this thing a long time ago in a very hard way. My mother said I should go and fry egg. She said I should fry egg for everybody in the house that morning. So I carried egg, six eggs. And the normal thing is, when you, except they didn't teach you, but let me just give you this secret. If you want to fry many eggs, you will break it one one. You break the first egg, it's good, you pour it in. You break the second egg separately, it's good, you pour it in. Me, laziness don't want me to be great. I wanted to go and watch film. My mother said I should watch fry egg. So I just, I didn't even look at it. I was just breaking it direct. I broke the first five eggs inside the bowl. Everything was good. As I broke the last egg, it was bad. You know what happened? The rest of the egg was bad. I don't care how good the first five were. Once another bag egg enters, it will be bad. That's how marriage is. You may be great. You may be amazing. But if the person you are joining with yourself is bad, there's no way your marriage will be good. Let me tell you, marriage is too heavy for one person to carry. That word brings frustration in marriage. Something they say two of us should carry. I'm the only one carrying it. That's what brings frustration in marriage. So if from the very beginning, you understand these things, that I have to choose the right person, and then we have to make the right choices, then we will have a great marriage. If you understand it from the beginning, then you won't have a problem in marriage. And that's why I want to sit, talk to the singles this morning. Are there single people in the house? Single ladies, are you in the house? Single ladies, are you in the house? Single men, are you in the house? Ah. Uh, I never even talk now, don't divest. Single men, are you in the house? Yes. Yeah. The choice of how your marriage will turn out is dependent on you. We can pray for you. We can pour anointing oil on you. I can jump, shout, do gymnastics this morning. But the decision is up to you. And the very first secret of having a great marriage. Are you listening? Are you listening? The very first secret is to choose well. Tell your neighbor, choose well. 
Hmm. The way I said this thing is small, eh? But this is the thing that can destroy your life. The person you carry to a joint body can spoil everything. I don't know if they've ever given you work before. And the person they say you should do the work with does not know work. Is it frustrating or is it not frustrating? Or the person that they gave you to work with, even if the person knows work, the person is complaining throughout which kind of work be this, which kind of suffer be this every day. That's so we go, they do. Now, so even if you wanted to have power to do the work, wouldn't you be frustrated? And that's what a lot of people do to themselves. You carry somebody who is not supposed to be anywhere near you. Now, my husband has this book, Who Should I Marry? Then, I mean, we came with a lot of resources. And for your own good, because sometimes when we do these things, people say they want to say book. See, whether I say book or no say book, if you marry wrong, now you go suffer. Me, I will be in my house, relaxing and be taken care of. Do you understand? Because me, I'm among the chop life gango. I don't know about the rest of you. And I know that Pastor George too is there. Pastor Manuela, we, we, this is the chairwoman. I'm just her assistant of Chop Life Gang. We've not come to this world to suffer. Uh -uh. And they've declared this month to be your month of chopping life. So help yourself by choosing the right person. The first thing you need to do is choose well. How do you know who to choose? There's a book here that says, who should I marry? Well, I'll give you a few things. Because my husband talked about a couple of things. He talked about the person must be in Christ, the person must be, the person must have character, the person must be compatible. But me, I want to emphasize on the person must be in Christ. Because this is where a lot of people miss it. One of the things what has taught me is that if you, if I let me ask you this question. If you plant mango tree, what will you get out of the tree? Mango fruit, Abby. Not banana. Not apple. Uh -uh. If you plant banana tree, what will you get out of it? Not plantain. Steep banana. So why is it that we will marry unbeliever and expect the person to have the characteristics of a God-fearing person? I don't understand that thing. It's only, it's only human beings, and especially women. Women, are you in the service this morning? Single girls, are you in the service this morning? Because I came here to shout. So that you will hear me before you make that rubbish choice. Because when you now marry nonsense... Pastor will not sleep. You will not be calling pastor. Meanwhile, when pastor was calling you, that marry a believer like you, you did not hear. Oh, pastor, you don't understand. I believe I'm sent to him. So if I just pray for him, now you know go to pray for unbeliever, we're full everywhere. Oh, pastor, you don't understand. He's a nice person. Nice is not even a fruit of the spirit. Is he born again? If he is not born of God, he cannot behave like God. And you need a man that behaves like God. If you are going to have a good marriage, marriage came from God. Anything that comes from God has to work by godly principles. And you can't make somebody who is not godly operate in godly principles. It does not work. When we say marry a believer, somebody who is born again, tongue talking, when there's problem, you are in a marriage and you cannot hold your husband's hand and say, Makane, bro, taha, leke, de, in the name of, as you do now, say, eh, eh, it's not every Bible, 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 let's find solution. That's what you want? That's what you want? You are in labor and you want to give birth and doctors are telling you something, your husband say, hey, what will we do now? Well, you can, he cannot put hand on you and say, in the name of Jesus. Listen, Marry well. Oh. Ah, marry well. The man must be in Christ. If you are a Christian, no, oh, marry another Christian. Let me tell you why. Because Christianity is not just about changing behavior. Christianity is that your nature is changed. The man inside is not the natural man. Listen, a lot of times we talk about being born again, but listen what happened. When Nicodemus went to Jesus, he said, sir, Everybody can see that you are doing great things. He said, but nobody can do these things you are doing except God is with him. And Jesus said, you are missing it. It's not about who is with me. It's about who born me. He said, if you are born by your natural parents, you will have natural behavior. If you are a Nigerian, how do you know another Nigerian? It's because you are a Nigerian. Abroad, they don't know us. If you look like your sister, you can carry your passport and travel. Or you both don't know us. Then the prince, they make them catch us. Oh, people, they don't know us. 
It's the same way you two, you don't know Chinko. Do you know which one is Korean? From Chinese, from Taiwanese. If you call them, they know you don't know them. They look alike to all of them. But if you are in Nigeria, you will know a Nigerian. So I hear a lot of people say, eh, but they are like a pretender in church. Are you a pretender? If you are not a pretender, then you will know somebody who is genuine. It's, it's as simple as that. So Jesus said, the reason why you are, you are looking at the things I do is because you are natural. Natural behavior is what you are noticing. But unless you are born again, born of spirit, you cannot begin to even understand what we are talking about. So when we say you marry somebody who is born again, we're saying you marry somebody whose spirit is renewed. Somebody that they are hold, the person holding his remote is God. That's the difference. So a believer may make mistakes, but at least when you go to God, God can press something inside him and say, my son, that's not how they behave. Do you know who is holding an unbeliever's remote? Satan. If God is a Christian's father, who is an unbeliever's father? Satan. And let me tell you, if you marry, even naturally, if you marry, your in-laws will come to your house. Do they not come? When your father-in-law is coming, he will come with Okporoko, he will come with Okporo, he will come with Tingolo, he will come with all kinds of things. When he's coming, he'll carry him. It's the same way in the spirit realm. If you're married to a Christian, when your father-in-law comes or your father comes, God, he will come and send his angels with blessings, with prosperity, with peace, with happiness. When you marry an unbeliever, you cannot tell his father not to come to his house. And when Satan is coming, he comes with problems. That's why you are quarreling every day in your house. That's why there's problem. Every morning you wake up, which kind of problem be this? You never know problem more. Because your father-in-law is still working actively. You never even start to see problems. That way you see now, taste now. Problem, they come. Better one. So we are shouting, single girls, don't marry an unbeliever. We're not joking. He may be handsome. He may like groove. He may, ah, they spend. They spend for me. Ah, I don't believe I they spend for me. You forbid to get your own money? Are you forbidding it? Do you hate to sign check in millions? Somebody sent me a message today that she's dating this guy. That the guy beat her. The guy, that should she live or should she stay? I said, the first question we even ask me, show say, you safe. You even need to be born again because it's, it's like the, the, I don't even know if you even born the first one. It's not good. Born again. <laughs> don't marry an unbeliever. Don't marry an unbeliever. We've said this over and over again. Don't marry an unbeliever. You are, as a believer, you are a spirit being. Your spirit is alive. How do you marry dead body? Do you, can you go to the mortuary now and say, see dead body and say, I love it. So why are we doing it? Just because he's walking about, he's dead. What you should be concerned about is, will he, will he give his life to Christ? Not I want to marry him. You're walking about with dead body. That's what you're doing. He's dead. So I don't care how nice he is. I don't care how sweet he is. All his father has to do is press his remote. That this girl, she's saying the name of Jesus in your house. Slap her, slap her. It will just come, just slap you. You say, I think I'm the one that offended him. Maybe I will not be praying like this. You will not talk to your own father? Are you see where Satan is going? All because of marriage. Do you know how many women have destroyed their destiny? Sacrificed their destiny on the altar of marriage? Because you want to marry. Then when you marry, what now happened? Because this marriage, did you ask people that are inside what is, what's happening there? Every day, single people who want to get married, they're also hurrying, hurrying, hurrying. We say, calm down. Then I see married people who want to run out of the marriage. I wish I can put you people together so you can counsel each other. <laughs> Choose well. The second thing, second secret of marriage is hearing God. You cannot even make that choice without hearing God. You can't even, I don't even understand how people say they are Christians and they don't hear God. He said, my sheep know my voice and they hear me. How are you in a relationship with someone and you don't know their voice? How are you in a relationship with someone and you are not hearing? It's like somebody coming to tell me now. that I mean, Pastor Manuel and I have been friends for just a few years. But when I pick my phone, even if she's calling me with a different number, I know her voice. I also know what she can tell me. 
I know how we play. So I am familiar. But my husband, you, if you come and tell my husband says something, I know what is because I don't just know his voice, I know his behavior. When you are in a relationship with God, you will know his voice, but you also know his behavior. And one of the things God has promised to do is to lead you. He says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Do you know why I shall not want? Do you know why we enjoy life? Because he will lead me. He will lead you beside still waters. There's rough water. But he will lead you. So, Marriage is not just, I like her, she's beautiful. I like him, he's so nice. And my friends like the way we look together. We look fine in a selfie. That's not why you marry somebody. You'll be amazed at the things we hear. That's not why you marry somebody. Have you asked the God who created you, who you should marry? Let me share a bit of my story. I was in a relationship with a doctor. I'm going, to, I'm going to summarize. This is the summary because the, the, the story alone can take two days. Let me just give you the very summarized version. So I, I met this guy, final year of school. I was about to leave school. So, and you know how they always tell you things like, ah, you must, you must catch your own bro in final year. You must start dating somebody in final year. Let me tell you, 90% of those relationships don't end in marriage. Because you don't even know yourself. You don't know what's going to happen. So two of you graduate, you come out as being a girl, sharp, you probably get a job before him. You start working, you earn more than him, then he'll come out and start feeling insecure, start giving you problems. And you say, because we started dating, I received him. You didn't receive anything. You didn't, let me tell you, if I receive him now, let me help you. You didn't receive anything until you come out and you know who you are. Before you can even know, you know who you are and where you are going before you can know who should go with you. So I met this guy, we got into a relationship, and I was in a relationship really for a wrong reason. I'd been diagnosed with PCOS about five years before that. So doctors had told me I would never have a child and blah, blah, blah. So a doctor proposed to me. It made sense. He was born again, romantic, everything. So it just made sense that, okay. I prayed about it, I didn't hear anything from God. I said, as God, no talk, now I say, no concern now, let's continue. <laughs> Instead of me to wait. Because that's what a lot of us are doing. You haven't heard anything from God. You are going, listen, be like Moses. Say, I'm not moving until you move. And I will not go until you go with me. So I went on my own. We started this relationship. Very turbulent. In that five years, we broke up like seven times. And the seven times, he was the one that ended it. If we end it, he will stick at his leg and come back again. I'm sorry. I said, yeah, let's be going. Because I need doctor. Let's be going. <laughs> I'm, I'm very practical. Though. Don't let it suffer myself. Before I go and start explaining to ordinary man that this is the condition, this is why I cannot born, then your mama go come, your papa go come. This one a doctor, I go to explain for your mama. So I plan myself. <laughs> so along the way, <laughs> so after five years of dating, one morning, so he went to the UK to do his, his master's. We had done introduction, me. I was doing my master's in Unilag. So I was like, after the one year we were both doing our master's, he will come back, we'll get married. And then... We'll go back to the UK. I plan my life. My children will grow up in, when I finally do IVF or whatever, my children will grow up in the UK. They will have British accents. And, you know, everything, everything just, I planned it. Because I've told you before, I'm part of the chop life people. It's just that there's a way to chop that life. So I say, I beg, I can't suffer. So we continue the relationship. One day, I was going, I had exams in school. So I was about to leave for my um, exams. And then I just heard God. I knew God wanted to speak to me. So I took time off and I left everything I was doing and I went to pray. So as I was praying, after praying, I spent time worshiping and everything. So after praying, um, I, started, I was studying the word because I know that that's how God speaks to me. God speaks to me through the Bible very clearly. If I show you anything God says to me, you will know what he's saying. It's not private interpretation, clear. So I was reading about Jesus, that Jesus needed to get to go back to Galilee. And the Bible says that he needed to go through Samaria. So I was reading John 4. He needed to go through Samaria just because of one woman. And that's why I know that God came here for somebody this morning. He came here for you. The Bible says it was necessary for him. So as he got to the well, he told the woman, I don't have time this morning. He told the woman, give me water. And the woman said, ah, it's as if you are really thirsty because Samaritan and Jew don't talk. The test has really hooked you. Why are you asking me for water? And Jesus said, if you know the person that is asking for water, it's you that will ask me for water. She now said, ah, okay now. Give me that water. So she wanted a deeper, um, she wanted something more. And then Jesus said to her, go and call your husband. And she said, I don't have any husband. And he said, you've rightfully said, for the man that you're with is not your husband. And it seemed as if somebody used, you know these highlighter pens? 
As if somebody used it to mark that place in the Bible for me, that the man you are with is not your own. <laughs> I say, Holy Spirit, rough play. <laughs> Why you they do like this? After five years, after introduction, the man I'm with is not my own. I say, it cannot now. Nah. cannot not be my own. Uh, so I now pray the prayer. I'm giving you a very short version. I say, God, first of all, I first thought, I said, God, how can you not tell me? How can you not tell me since? It's not you're telling me. And then God told me something. He said, look at you. I, I used to live in Port Harcourt. I lived in Port Harcourt for about two years. So I used to journal a lot. I used to write a lot. Anything God tells me, I write it down. And he said to me, go and look at your journal. Um, 20, 2000 and, 2002. So I went to my room. I said, where will I find it? I just put my hand. My journals fell. And so that was the only one. Listen, there's a supernatural part of your life. God does miracles. He works straight things for you. And so I picked up the journal, and the first page I opened, I saw, I can't remember the date right now, but I wrote it. I wrote the date, I wrote Woji, I wrote that God said to me, forget the former things of old, for behold, I do a new thing. When I saw that scripture, I automatically interpreted it to mean that God said we should stop quarreling and we should start again. <laughs> and God said, remember I told you then, but you didn't hear, you dragged this thing another two years. He says, so now the money of it is not your own. And you're going to end, you have to end this relationship. So long and short, I ended the relationship. With plenty crying, you know, and plenty praying. But I still obeyed God. Listen, anything God is telling you to let go of, is because he has better for you. He has better for you. So God told me to let go of that relationship. I let go of it. He was crying. I was crying. We were praying. What kind of drama I don't want to get you guys involved in. And so I told God, I said, the same way you ended this, the same way you've always spoken to me is the same way you will tell me clearly. Because he says, I will guide you with my eyes on the best pathway for your life. He said, don't be stubborn like the mule that they have to pull you by force or use situations. He said, listen, just ask me, I will tell you. So I asked him, take God at his word. I asked him. I said, the same way you told me is not this one. No, yeah, tell me who it is. Oh. Because I'm not really like young again that I'm going to start boyfriend, toast me, toast not toast. Just tell me, let's move on with our life. And so one day after service, I was praying. And I was, after I finished praying, I was worshiping. And then I just, I was reading, see, study the word. So I was just studying the word. And then he took me to 1 Samuel 16 from verse 11, where Samuel went to anoint one of David's, um, Jesse's sons to be king. And then he got there and tried to anoint different ones. And he said, it's not this one, it's not this one. And then he asked. And Samuel said unto Jesse, he said, I hear all thy children. And he said, there remaineth yet the youngest. And behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, send and fetch him, for we will not sit down till he comes hither. And he sent and brought him. Now he was ruddy and of a beautiful countenance and goodly to look at. And the Lord said, arise and anoint him, for this is he. The same thing that happened to me that day, as if a highlight, I just highlighted this part. He said, he's the youngest, he's taking care of the sheep. I say, what does this mean? What is all this? And then he just said to me, your new friend, because Pascal and I just became friends. He said, your new friend, what position is he in the family? I say, he's the last born. He said, what do pastors do? I say, they take care of the sheep. He said, arise, anoint him for he's the one. That's why we are here today. <laughs> but you, no, you don't want that kind of enjoyment. You really like to suffer. You like to prove that you know more than the Lord. You don't want God to lead you. You don't want God to lead you. God can lead you, can do supernatural things because you are not a natural man. You're not a natural man. You must understand that. And so this was how God led me. And you see, the thing is, God didn't stop there for me. When it was not time to have children, remember I told you, doctors told me I won't have children. I'm giving you the very short version. And, and I believe this evening, we're going to pray for those trusting God for the fruit of womb because that's one of the anointings that I carry. Anywhere I go, I kick infertility out of that city. God will never allow any of his children to be barren, except you don't want. Never. He has promised and God keeps his word. He's not a man that he should lie. Neither is he the son of man that he will relent. Has he said something and will he not do it? <laughs> so in the eight years, God brought me on a journey. I'll give you a few scriptures, just two. My, parents, my mom especially was not disturbing me. You must go to doctor. You must go to this. I tried. I tried at first. And then one day God said to me, Isaiah 8, 19 to 22, message translation. He says, when people tell you, try out the fortune tellers, Consult the spiritualist. Why not tap into the spirit world? Get in touch with the dead. That's try different things. He said, tell them, no, we're going to study the scriptures. Can you believe this is in the Bible? 
You don't believe I will because you're not reading it, sir. My auntie, read your Bible. It says, people who try the other ways get nowhere. A dead end. Frustrated and famished. They try one thing and after the other. And when nothing works out, they get angry. So God said to me, don't run around. Anytime they tell you, let's go here, let's go there. They tell they say, no, I'm going to study the word. So God said to me, study the word. Find my promises. Stand on them. Confess them. Believe them until it produces. Then I now tried one doctor like this that they told me that. This is where I'm going to end. Try one doctor that they told me that, ah, he's a Christian and everything. So I said, oh, well, okay, let me go. The man said, okay, you're going to do tests. Uh, you're going to do different tests. He told me to come and do tests. The day before I was supposed to do that test, I met one woman. And the woman told me that. So we're talking and she said, oh, David. And she said she had, her children's name are David and Davida. I said, ah, that's my children's name. And I'm believing God for David and Davida twins. I'm going to come and sow into your life. And the woman said, okay. And we greeted. As I was leaving the place I went to, the person that escorted me said, you don't know that woman. I said, no, no. He said, you don't know that woman. I said, no, no, I'm not. Who she be? He said, now your pastor, now your doctor wife be that now. I said, are you serious? Say, yeah, my doctor has twins. David and David are a boy and girl. She said, which twins? Now, faith, the woman, they talk. Your doctor, they find Peking. <laughs> so I entered my car. I cried all the way back to the office. And I heard the Holy Spirit say to me, why won't you let me help you? The people you are running to, they too are running to me for help. Listen to this scripture. Then he gave me Isaiah 30 verse 15. He says, God, the master, the holy of Israel has this solemn counsel. He says, your salvation requires you to turn back to me and stop your silly efforts to save yourself. He says, your strength will come from settling down in complete dependence on me. The very thing you've been unwilling to do. That day I made up my mind. I said, I'm going back to the word. That Bible I'm preaching that it will work for you. Let it work for me first. This Christianity you say you are carrying on your head, it can produce. So you work it till it works. You can have a good marriage. And I say you will have a good marriage in the name of Jesus. You will have children in the name of Jesus. You will have all the money that you need. You will have peace. You will have prosperity. Everything that you need. So I went back and I sat down on the wall. Today I have three children. Exactly what God told me. I don't even want to go into that now. Exactly what God told me. So if you're going to have a great mind, you must be hearing God. In, second, in the next service I'm going to teach, I'm going to teach you the power of prayer. It's my secret weapon in marriage. Prayer. <laughs> a praying person will not suffer in this. I'm telling you, if you really understand the principles of prayer and the person you are praying to, there's nothing that will be impossible to you. So if you're a single person this morning, draw your ear. Draw your ear. The two <laughs> You will not draw it, Abby. Draw it very well. Are you hearing me? Choose well. Say choose well. Choose well. Say it again. Say choose well. Choose say I will not marry an unbeliever. Draw the ear again. Say this ear you will hear God. Point at your eye. Say this eye you will see. Finally you will get counsel. Because when I finish saying all these things, somebody will say, oh I know now. I, 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 I think I heard God. You will get counsel. That's why God puts a shepherd over you. You are the one that is in love. Pastor George is not in love. Pastor Menola is only in love with one person. It's only one person she sees in her life. She will tell you the truth. The Bible says that in the multitude of counsel, there's what? There's safety. So you are a single person. You are in love. If your church has systems in place, follow the systems. They say do counseling for six months. You say, ah, this six months is too long. But the way my body is doing me, that body, they will beat it after my head. <laughs> Ah, they pity you. They laugh, eh? Oh, God. Whatever they've set in place, that thing you are hiding from pastor, if you cannot introduce your fiancé to pastor, there's something wrong. That person you are hiding from your pastor, now see pastor go settle the matter. That's when you start hearing things like, after pastor say, don't marry, don't marry, don't marry. You say, pastor, don't worry. God is with us. After all, me too, I hear God. There are no grandchildren in the kingdom, sir. God too is speaking to me. Then you now go and marry. Two months, you now come. Pastor, I'm done. You can't be done, no. <laughs> now, waiting the proof of fire, and I ain't they done. You never enter fire. And then time people tell me that, I always tell them, I say, you are done. We never wash beans. My mind they smell. How? You can't be done. You will be there. You will get counsel, and you will hear God. I declare over you, you will not miss it in marriage. You will not marry the wrong person. You will not be a goat. You will be a sheep that hears the voice of the Lord. Every 
single thing God says to you, I declare that he will give you the grace to obey it in the name of Jesus. Before I go, I have to do something very important. Thank you for watching The End Time Bride. We pray that you were edified, equipped, and empowered through the word to establish the kingdom of God and of his Christ everywhere that your soles of your feet tread. Please make sure to like, share, and subscribe to reach every End Time Bride worldwide. Stay blessed.